Hello and welcome to What Would Jesus Tech? My name is Andrew Noble, and today I am not joined by Joel. He is on a plane right now. He's getting back from a conference. His Splunk stuff, Cisco stuff is going well. Um, and Austin, he would love to be here. He sent me a message this morning saying, sorry, man, I just got to take care of my new baby. So he is like two days into being a fatherhood, being a father as of this recording. Um, and so he will be listening, but he will not be getting to uh, join me in talking to Cam Pack. So Cam, I'm actually going to let him introduce himself. I think yeah. sometimes when I do the introduction, I like create my own things that I think are important. But when people give their own introduction, it's like, oh, well, what do you want to say about yourself? Um, so Cam, why don't you introduce yourself to our listeners? Sweet. Yeah, I'm Cam Pack. I live in Edmond, Oklahoma. I have a beautiful wife. At this time of recording, a 10-month-old boy. His name is Bennett. Uh, super sweet. Like Being a dad is awesome. And, um, I have been a developer for a bit. Um, I like to say I create digital experiences that lead to freedom through Christ and community. Um, you'll see that reflected in what we talk about today. And hopefully if we have a conversation in the future with other people who are listening, I'd love to get to meet people, hear your story, share your story. Uh, but I love faith, love tech. And it's just really cool seeing the combo of it and being part of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And tell me more about that story about you kind of going through your software development journey has that always been something that you've wanted to do and like just code <laughs> and that sort of thing? Cause you're, you're like 10 years into it now, give or take. Yeah, I've been in it a bit. Um, cause when I graduated high school it was 2015, started computer science then in that summer. And now it's 2024 summer. So it's been about nine years, which is wild. But there's two instances where I did like give up programming. I laid it down, said well, like, I felt like in that time, he's calling me to something different. And then he called me back, which was really intriguing, but exciting. I didn't want to be a programmer. I think I just, when I was starting computer science, I just thought it was going to be hardware. And uh, mm. with my dad being in IT and my siblings, we just all love tech. It's kind of the, you look at the list of majors, there's so many things that you could do. It's really hard. You're high school, you near, you just graduate. Like, how do you figure out what you want to do? But by the grace of God, computer science stuck out to me, went to it, well, did college up here in Edmonds. I didn't know computer science was leading to software. So when I get into it, I'm like, this is mind boggling. And most of my life, um, and this is part of my story, was just overwhelming anxiety and fear of man. Just like most of my life, probably like 85% of living days was like, that up until about maybe a year and a half ago, somewhere around then. But that goes into, okay, I'm trying to learn this, trying to figure this out. I can't figure and solve this problem out. I'm really stressed. I want to be able to prove to my teachers. I want to be able to prove to people that I can, you know, I can do good. I can succeed. And at some point there's a guy named Zach. He started discipling me. So I, I became a believer of Jesus when I was in end of middle school. I think I was 12 years old. And yeah, the messages that they would say at youth group started to make sense. And I was just get back to the fear of man thing. It took me like probably like four weeks of Wednesday services to be able to say, I'm going to go up to the front and like, because that's how it was. You would go up to the front. You say, I dedicate my life to Jesus. I follow Jesus. I repent. Um, but you had to do it in front of everybody. <laughs> and I was like, oh. but I did. But I didn't, after that, I didn't have understanding, like, how do I read the Bible? How do I live as a Christian? Um, more so, it just kind of became do good because I am a Christian now and I should do good now, <laughs> which is not like, that's not freedom. Definitely not the freedom that Jesus affords for us. Oh. Um. Yeah, I get discipled in college by a guy named Zach. He wants to be my friend. And I'm like, what? why do you want to be my friend? What do I do? I owe you something? Like, And it was so kind because God knew that I needed a friend. 
like out of anything. I needed someone who was consistent and who was a hand to feed of Jesus. You need an app. Isn't that what you're. <laughs> I'm, I'm, no, uh, I'm joking. It's, this and, is, this and, is an important point, right? In the, in the very important point. How Absolutely. Are we matured. Is it going to be through an app or is it going to be through people? And there's a place for both, but we need, yeah. we need, we need people, we need people to disciple us, not just algorithms. Yeah, absolutely. And and I'll get on this piece in a second and later, but um, I was at a men's retreat. This was, we're fast forwarding. We're, we're going into the future for a second. I don't have my phone. I got lots of time to pray and I'm just trying to process some things. At that point, I'm working at Uversion and I'm like, Lord, like we, I surrender to you. I want to hear from you. Do you have vision for what we're doing? And what came, nothing came to mind for days. But then towards at the very end, last day, I start getting like just ideas and thoughts and test this if you want, whoever's listening, like pray and ask the Lord for like wisdom on this. But what came to mind was like self-service faith leads to suffering. And I didn't like, I kind of, I kind of caught on of like, so if we just say, here's an app, you're good. That isn't, that's not enough. And that's not like, we need humans. We need people. Apps can be great companions. And that really put on my heart community at that point. Uh, and Uversion's focus is going towards more towards community, which it took a little bit for the tide to shift. We can, I can get on that in another time, but yeah, this is exactly what you're saying. Like, it's not just an app to give, but apps can be wonderful complements to allow and facilitate community. Um, mm-hmm. There's the beauty of community and then there's solace. Solace is like those quiet times, those times where you grow like deep roots with the Lord. Maybe you're doing Bible study, maybe you're praying, you're pleading. Maybe you're listening um, or doing some other, some other thing, just seeking the Lord, which strengthens you and grows you and pulls you into community. And it's like, you almost can't help but go to community. And then that's where you can share these fruits that have grown and are growing with the people, with the community. And then it's kind of this dance back and forth. So I've been like very, that was uh, just hearing that and processing that at the time has definitely been one of the things that pointed me towards something like faith tools in the future. Um, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. No, that makes sense. One thing that uh, I've always said to people as they're getting married, I help lead a marriage ministry in my church. I say to them, you know, a good marriage is not insular and only directed into one another. A good marriage, true, true love ends up overflowing outward. Yeah. So it's a very similar concept. And I see it, I think we see it in God Himself in eternity past. You know, God within the Trinity had this relational love, this covenant love. And it, you could say it overflowed into the creation of us, into the creation yeah. of this world, into more beauty, more life. And so you had, you know, you have even in, in God Himself this understanding of, yeah, that like, just read Jesus's words in, in John, the gospel of John, and you'll see like his love for God, God's love for him, the father's love for him. And it's like this reciprocal mutual. And then the spirit's in on it too. And they're just like glorifying one another. And then it's like, and now we go out. That's why, that's why I lay down my life. And then it's like, it just, yeah. it flows further. Right. So, I mean, it's, if you don't have that center in a marriage of we, we gather our resources, so to speak, we gather our our sense, sense of place, sense of purpose, our belonging fundamentally in God, and we gather it too within one another, then you have this strong rootedness that, going back to that language that you kind of use, that rootedness to go out and to help other other trees, other saplings, other, you know, organisms that have different gifts, right? So, yeah. anyways, it's, uh, yeah, and it's, it's, it's interesting. So you, you are going to jump into your bit of the story of, of faith tools. And that's kind of why I wanted to reach out to you in the first place is I've been seeing you online. I've been seeing all this cool stuff you're doing. And I think there's a lot of ambitious projects done by Christians out there. Um, 
And I don't want to like knock, knock them. I, even I've been on these project teams before where it's like, yeah. you kind of have a project. And then after like a year, there's just really nothing happening. The website dies down, that sort of thing. There seems yeah. to be with what you're building, a longevity to it, a purpose with it. I mean, you're still yeah. trying to figure out what it looks like. But to my knowledge, you're also like, you have, it's not your full-time job, right? And you actually have another job where you're building an app for homeless people. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. Like, could you tell me a little bit about that? Because literally, uh, I was part of Faith Tech Waterloo five, six years ago. I meet with a group, a team of developers. We started building an app for homeless people, but we never wow. built it. We we were one of those. We saw the need. Um, I spoke to uh, a few different people and there's like, yeah, there's a need for this because there's no central resource for uh, yep. to send people who are homeless or people who are really caring for those who are homeless and they just need more knowledge and preparation to support. Anyway, so what's the deal behind what you're working on there? Yeah, thank you for letting me talk about that. Yeah, that's my day job. So right now it's like noon time and so we're recording this on lunch hour, which is which is great. Yes. I work for a company called Our Technology. So O U R Technology. If you want to visit our website, it's ourtechnology.co. And we build software that helps the people who serve the homeless. So if you are like a city, a nonprofit, or an organization that has a heart to serve the homeless and potentially resources to be able to do that, our app and ecosystem eventually is for you. And the app that we just released, um, right now it's underneath Our Calling, which is a Dallas-based um, nonprofit that is really incredible at serving the homeless. And they have a great, um, they have a great, I don't know what you would call it, but success rate for getting homeless folks who need, we call them homeless neighbors, who need help into the right places and with the right resources that they need. So if they need, let's say your domestic abuse, um, you don't want to just go to any shelter. We want to hear your story and then help you get to a domestic abuse shelter. And it's, mm -hmm. it's the answer sometimes is you're homeless, but the answer might not actually be a house right now. Sometimes you put a homeless person in a house and they're, they've been used to living on the streets. You can't just give a house and say, all right, you're good. The streets can be rough and just a very hard place. So I love being able to, to serve the middle, the middlemen, like the people who serve the homeless. Hmm. Um, yeah. I have a heart, big heart for homeless and like heart physically hurts because I want to help, but I don't know, didn't know how. You can't just always give money. When I saw our technology, um, this was back in November, I was like, I would love to, I really feel called to be part of this and then could use software to be able to do that. Um, so yes, thank you for sharing the screen. Um, yeah, for those who are watching, you'll see they've served over 60,000 people through the public facing app that they have available now. And it seems like it's a whole setup to like, there's more coming. There's a no, new yes. app coming and I guess it won't be so local to just one region, but in multiple regions. And it's, Cause we, we have this idea too. And we chatted about it um, as a small team. We're like, Oh, once we build this infrastructure, it'll be good in every city right yep. um or a small town even like but you just need to have it so that people can easily update their information like it's a complicated it's actually complicated you need to put full time work into it so i'm so glad that you guys are yes there. yeah i appreciate that yeah so you can go on the website and actually download the app and right now our calling is dallas based so you get a lot of great resources in dallas however wherever you're living you can download the app and then you can submit resources in your area so how does this benefit? Um, surprisingly, there's a large number of homeless uh, neighbors who have phones. I can kind of attribute it to, if you think of like the, I don't remember what bill it was, but it's like, imagine it's like a lifeline bill. You're entitled to a phone. Like it's an American right. And so they would give out a phone. You just say, hey, I need a phone. I don't have a phone. Maybe you say, here's my social security number. Boom, you get a phone with internet. Sometimes you need help, but you don't know how to find that help. This is a place to help you find all the clothing, food, uh, food pantries, shelters. Maybe there's other resources that is local near you. Let's say you're homeless, so you can go and find that. Let's say you're someone who wants to help the homeless. 
You just go on the app and can search and have this conversation with someone who's homeless and say, hey, this is here. Go click the directions button. It'll open up Google Maps and you can say like to get there. It would be like just down this road, down this road, down this road. Or yeah, there, there's other ways. Just go with them. Yeah. Yeah. There actually is a, a feature that this part I'm very excited about and passionate about is you can say, hey, somebody needs help. So go on the help tab, click somebody needs help. You can drag the pin and say they're right here. And if they want you to or they allow, you can take a picture, showcase kind of where they're at, describe what's happening. Hey, this person's homeless. They have kids with them. They're asking for X, Y, Z. And then mm -hmm. if you do it in the Our Calling app and you submit it, what will actually happen is someone at Our Calling in Dallas, like they have team members to go dispatch to them to go check and see like, hey, how can I meet your needs? How are you doing? And that's beautiful because it can relieve stress on like emergency authorities. So police officers or firemen, EMS from going all the way down to focus on that when then boom, you have trained professionals to be able to go visit and then they're saving time over here. Um, that will expand and how it can expand is kind of like if you think of the church, um, the church structure is like go to that local community find people in a local community who have the gifts and abilities to go and serve these people. We partner with them and say, okay, you can be set up in this software to be able to get like reports whenever someone sends in a report and then boom, they can say, okay, I claim this and I go visit. And you can have multiple organizations working together on this dispatch system. And that's the, the whole, if you are a city, you know, someone who's a city official or a, a nonprofit working in a similar space, find us on LinkedIn, reach out. We would love to chat and just try to see how we can expand to maybe your city. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I, I learned about this through you cause you worked there. So then I ended up on it, but this is, it, yeah. it, it just, it's a, not a Christian organization or is it explicitly Christian? It's uh, our calling is our technology is the for-profit built from the nonprofit called our calling. And mm -hmm. the reason why is this can actually, a lot of people wanted software like this. So if we could put time, energy, and hours into it, then we can actually build it for people to use. And what's great is they'll actually pay to be able to use it, and that can go and have money come back to our calling so that they can continue operations that they're doing. Our technology, we're all Christians. Like, that's the cool thing. Uh, there's different boundaries that we have to have because if you just say Jesus to a city, to some nonprofits, they might actually just not even want to have a conversation. So we approach it a little differently, but we're not going to hide that. Like we are believers and we do love them. And like, mm -hmm. it just depends on how the conversation will, will roll, but that's why it's not overt. Yeah, no, that makes sense. It's, it's an interesting, I've talked with people before a heuristic that I, that I, it's just because it's three R's, it's just too good not to use. There's reckless technology companies, there's responsible technology companies, and there's redemptive technology companies. And so I, it's not, I don't really like, because how do you distinguish responsible from redemptive because of like, then you get into some nuances in theology and Christ and culture conversations and all this kind of stuff. But I think your story is an interesting one in the sense that you're currently perhaps at a responsible tech product right now that serves everyone, regardless of whether or not they're Christian. Um, it's, yeah. uh, it's purpose isn't tied necessarily to Christian principles, though I think it'd be a fair argument to say that like fundamentally caring for the poor, that's going to be something that is part of Christianity yeah. because we we have a rich God who became poor for us versus a secular perspective with evolution. Like what do they have? They have the strong eat the weak. So if you're going to follow your principles as a strong eat the weak evolutionist, you know, like, and that's all you have without some more fundamental basis for human rights. Anyways, I'm getting distracted here, but you got a responsible or, or reckless and some people, they are working at reckless companies and they're Christians and they're in, they're struggling with their conscience about it. And maybe yeah. they shouldn't stay. Maybe they should leave. I think some of them, they don't leave because they're like, well, I don't know. It's too hard to leave. And it's like, no, that's not a good reason. Like follow your conscience yeah. on this. Some people, they really do need to leave some companies and move into other ones and take their talents somewhere else. So you, you are doing that. You are very thoughtful about where you work and you pray about it and you put your time. And now you're starting this new app on the side 
Yeah. Like, who knows? Maybe it'll turn into a full time gig, or you'll have to split your time, or you'll do Elon Musk style and just have multiple companies. <laughs> um, the Christian Elon Musk can pack. You heard it here first. No. No. Yeah, so <laughs> to, uh, I joke because uh, as Christians, we're not about that pride ego stuff. But so you're so tell me more about this faith tools thing. What is the, yeah, what is the problem you're trying to solve, and what's the story behind it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so now we're kind of zooming back. That was a fun, like fun little um, talk that we just had. Thank you for letting me talk about what, what I do at work. Excited to hear from people who, who have heard uh, this podcast. Uh, but we're zooming back out to a little bit of my story. Uh, God, like there's a fun, I'm not going to explain it, but I'll kind of give you a teaser is my wife, who is my girlfriend at the time, we're skateboarding at a church at Life Church in Edmond, and there's hills, and she falls, and there's blood, but there's nobody there. And then out of nowhere, a couple comes, takes us to the nearby hospital, and one of them works for you version, and like the husband works for you version, the wife works at Life Church, and they become friends of ours. Hannah was okay. <laughs> it's just head bleeds a lot more than other areas, but that was really cool because a year later. Um, that that wife, um, that girl reached out to Hannah and said, "Hey, is your boyfriend still interested in like faith, like a tech internship? Because we're opening up some tech internships at Life Church. So there was some Life Church ones, there's some U Version ones. Uh, for those listening, U Version is a digital ministry of Life Church and comes from uh, from the church. So I'm like, absolutely. Even though I'm doing uh, interpersonal communication, I completely switched my major." The reason why I switched majors is because I was being disciplined. I was like, I love this. I love the freedom of like knowing, learning more about identity in Christ, but also like the depths, depths of Jesus, depths of community. That was so freeing to me because I just didn't really have that growing up. And I'm like, I want to bring that to people. And I'm like, I want to be a pastor and I love technology. So it's kind of a hard reconcile. And there's probably many people who have listened, listening right now, like, or like experiencing that or have experienced that. And maybe my story can help, but I do, I start the internship. They, they asked me, where do you want to work? And I'm like, in my mind, I want to say you version, but out my mouth comes it. So I start, I start to work in the it department as a <laughs> developer. It's really funny as a developer, but not like I wasn't in computer science classes anymore. And so it was just odd that I did that and stepped into that. But then slowly over time, started learning web development. They had a project and it was really cool. We were integrating this like check-in software and it was really like a person being able to like manage people in a good way to be able to say, Hey, are they being followed up with and things like that. So it was, it was fun to get to work on that. I had no clue what I was doing. There's a site, there's a page that's still live today. And so that was in, uh, it's January, 2018 is when I started there. I graduated college in May of 2019, let me think. Hannah and I got married June 2019, started work at Uversion somewhere around there. The story about Uversion is um, I tried to get in. I really wanted to work at Uversion. I thought it was like probably one of the coolest places you could work as, as a believer, but also um, in, in tech. Also, uh, to fill in a gap, I went back to computer science. Um, it was hard. It was really fun. Um, so now we're back at Uversion and I'm starting this. And then I try to get in, God closes doors. I try to get in, God closes doors. And then I mm -hmm. surrender and I really surrender. I say, Lord, if you have something better, like if you have something that's not this, obviously like I, I'm leaning on my own understanding. You have something better. You have a way bigger picture. Um, so I want what you want. And if it's not your version, I'll step into whatever it is. And then what was crazy and great um, and super kind is I think within the next day or a couple of days, I had an interview at Uversion. I'm not even sure if I applied. Like my my boss was having conversations for me. So I think like I don't I don't really remember how it all panned out, but I got a role. Um so thank God. And I was humbled. What was great was I came in humbled. So I, I didn't prove myself to get there. It kind of takes a turn a little bit when I start going there and I am experiencing health issues. 
So I have some autoimmune health issues that I didn't know I had. And with all the stress of school, preparing for marriage, starting this new job without really taking a break in between school and, and the new job, it took a lot on my body. Your body can only handle so much and, it, and mine started attacking itself. Like brain fog, lots of pain in my back, shoulders, neck, just dizziness. Had to go hospital a few times. You, you like if anyone has experienced that, like it's tough, especially trying to start in a new role. I'm like, can I do some web stuff? Like, please. And and, I, and I'm like, I don't know what's happening to my body. And I feel this pressure in me to try to perform. To try to be like, hey, there's this guy over here that worked at NASA. He has code running on the ISS right now. I want to be like him. I want to be able to contribute enough like him. Chris, if you're listening to this, hello. But hey, I was warring with that, that thing again, that ugly uh, fear of man, not feeling enough, um, overwhelm, anxiety. And that lasted for years when I'm at, when I'm at version. So you can... You can be at a wonderful place, one of the coolest places ever, and like where you believe God has called you and still experience stuff like this. Mm-hmm. But there was there was still a like a weaving of a redemption story throughout it. Uh, it's I started to get better at what I was doing. I started to see an eye for design, health and stuff started getting worse. They said, Hey, you can do design. Like I asked if I could do design because it was a little better on my head. And they said, Yeah, you could do it. So they let me do half and half and then eventually full-time design. And then I'm in that. And then I get really sick. I get sick. This is starting. This is kind of recent. November of 2022 up until April 2023. I was just sick. I was nauseous. I was dizzy. had to lay down. My stomach hurt all the time. Um, And it was just a whirlwind. But the beauty of it was... I replaced my phone with a very simple phone. It was called the light phone. If anyone knows what that is, Mm -hmm. Um, it can only do bare minimum stuff. And then I just had time to journal, pray, lay down and eat, and then just try to move around, try to, try to exercise. And my wife was super great during that time, just taking care of me. And we had no clue what was going on, how to go on short term uh, disability. Life church U version was great to let me go do that. And Lots of time to, I guess, address the things I didn't really want to think about. Fear, fear of man. What is, why do I believe in these lies when the word has different truths? Things like that. And he starts to reveal truth through, um, through his word, through things that like accountability friends and partners were saying to me. Like, I started to realize like, okay, God, if you like, if you created me, you created me for a purpose. And like, even in sickness, like I can have a successful day and win the day with you. Like you can, you can do this day can be a blessing to, to myself, to other people. So I got to the point and sickness of Lord, you're enough for today. And I was probably, that's, that's what I like to carry and try to carry is God, you're enough for today. I surrender to you. That's like, brings you to the most ability to be kind of just present with people. And if you're present with people, you can see them. If you can see them, you can love them. And then that the times of solace is growing in that, those, those depths, those rootedness that that's where compassion can develop. And so I start to see like in that, I start to, I do a couple changes, diet changes and things. And um, really, head and what I'm believing changes, but it's, I believe a spiritual uh, change from renewing my mind. And I start to feel better. April 2023 is when I started feeling like a lot better, able to come back to work. And I believe like out of nowhere, I'm just getting ideas and excitement about code. And I'm like, God, I gave up code. Remember, this is the second time now that I've given up code. And, I, and I'm like, I just want to serve you however. And then I start getting ideas. For one of the tools is a church website builder. It's very simple. Um, it's kind of like a link in a bio or a church in bio website. So if you go to mm-hmm. melos.church, M-E-L-O-S dot church, um, that was like the first kind of product that that I worked on. That was like a side project. Why, 
why build it? I, I grew up in a small church and I felt like it's it was hard to do IT stuff for them. It was hard for them to even go and sign up for like a church website builder and then like drag and drop things around. It was like, what if they just came, they threw their stuff and said, here's my information and it was automatically organized for them. So that's kind of the idea is to serve and, and make it free to them. I had no desire before that to really like make anything on the side. I'm already doing that work. What's the point? I want to be like, I don't know, just if, if, if programmers are listening to this, like they know some of them know it's like you get off at five so you can go back on your computer to, to have fun and do this, do the same thing that you're kind of doing at work, which is kind of a joke, but God was putting in my mind and heart code, but more, more deeply people who code, people who create these tools, people who create these things. And in like a very grace filled, but powerful way, I feel like he was saying, teach my people. And, and that's in a way of like, teach my people with reference to those who are in faith and tech to, to learn the ability to like God today is enough. You're enough for today. And in that, they can actually be more willing to hear from the Lord and get wisdom and ideas from the Holy Spirit to be able to design and create some of the biggest, like best sorts of solutions, tech solutions that meet their needs. Um, there's a lot of Silicon Valley stuff and procedures and processes that don't serve in the way that we have values for. They call cycles, things that you work on every two weeks, they call them sprints. Is Jesus sprinting? Is he consistently sprinting forever and ever and ever? And is he saying like, if you don't do this, then that person won't be saved. And it's like, like he's not in that hurry. He's not in that rush. That's a big message that I feel like God wanted me to share with people and just live and try to embody it. Cause I in that, need, like, like, Oh, absolutely. Broadly with, cause I've, I'm friends with many people who work in tech and, you know, Joel has said this to me before on the podcast that the most convicting thing for him that we've we've talked about together is when I bring up the importance of Sabbath and rest and, you know, because he gets excited about all the work, but it's like, oh, man, I know I actually need to take a break. Yeah. yeah. One time we were literally talking, like just planning out future podcast episodes and things like that is maybe a year ago. And I brought up to him about just a passage I was studying in scripture when Jesus says to the disciples, hey, like you're, you guys need to, like, it's been a whole day or it's been a while. You've been on your feet. You, Jesus tells them, you got to take a break. Like, just go eat. You got to go eat something. And it's wild for that to be in scripture, but it is. I don't have yeah. a reference right in front of me, but that's basically what happens. He's like, you got to get some rest. Like, you can't just work through your, your lunch. And Joel's like, man. He's literally eating right now on the call with me to, to <laughs> save time. I mean, I'm doing the same thing to you right now. It's your lunch break. So, um, uh, yeah, this is, yes. yeah, yeah, this is fulfilling. Yes. Yeah, this is fulfilling to me. You. Well, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Um, uh, so, anyways, sorry. You, so, faith tools, so you're, you're I, basically it's crazy. I haven't even gotten to it yet. Me, right. But, yeah. Yes, wrestling. And I'm like, okay, now I'm back at you version. I could tell the story of you version in the future. I, I have need to tell people about what it's like. Um, it's great. And then it's also everyone's human. Nobody's perfect, but it's great. Um, and it's kind of what you, what you bring to it. And I feel like code is like God's putting code on my mind, like very heavily. I'm getting more ideas to things to build. And then I want to, I start to feel this desire. Like I need to be back in it. Um, I don't know why, and it's different this time. The overwhelm, the fear, the anxiety, like when he strengthened me in that deep time, even though it was like long sickness, it was very uh, much shalom, that complete rest, that wholeness, that peace. So like I look back on it, yeah, it was hard, but it was a very good time because of that. And I come out strengthened and he starts to heal these parts of me that, I worried and had all my life of like, and he was, he was healing some of it before, but now I can code and not feel that worry, that anxiety, that stress, that pain, that like it, my body doesn't hurt like crazy every time. Like I'm trying to 
Yeah, so it was really kind of him to do that. I feel like he wants me to get back into coding. How do I do that? And I pray, and it's the, I'm an effort today. There's no answer. <laughs> There's no clear answer. It's uh, I didn't feel like he said, turn and go to, like, ask your boss if you could code again. It wasn't that. And I didn't know why. It didn't make sense. Like, I was also wrestling with if I wasn't working at Uvergen because I have no clear reason to leave. It's a great place. Is that wrong? Is that bad? And get get wise wisdom from from believers and a surrender. It was a broken, contrite spirit. Like that is that is a good um, spirit to be in to be able to to make good decisions like that. Months later, I hear about our technology. You guys heard the spiel. You know what our technology is now. Um, and then I feel I'm playing the video for it. Hannah, my wife hears it. She's like, that is, that is amazing. And I'm like, it is amazing. Like, this is it. Um, I instantly go make a PowerPoint kind of presentation and then I, up, I make, a an application and I submit it. Um, I start working there in December and I did a, it was sweet that you version let me finish strong. Like there's like a finish strong, set me off well with like a blessing. And that was a goal is like, there's no real reason to leave, but leave well. Um, and was able to do that. So I'm at this, our technology, and now I'm working, you're seeing evidence of what was created. That was December of um, 2023. When we started, we started on the app this year. Um, just got it finished and shipped and working. We hired a couple uh, great people and we're about to continue building some of the other stuff. Big tools is I'm out of version. I'm looking around. Where are these faith and tech people at? Like where, where I was spoiled. I could geek out. I could turn around and geek out to Brad over here about just anything that I want, like faith and tech and just whatever. And I didn't really have that as much, even though some of my friends from you are in the life group. And I was, and I, then I stumbled, I started building some things and I'm like, I start to hear stories and get to meet cool people on Twitter. I meet people on the faith tech Slack. I meet some other people and I start to hear a common kind of thread is either they're looking for where's the faith and tech community or they're like, I've built this, but I kind of built it in a silo. Like I kind of just built it without that community, without some have been discouraged and said, I'm not going to build another thing like that. Like I'm not going to do it. And that kind of hurt, like hurt a little bit. There was a guy named Anmol. He is a UI designer student and he's from India. He goes on Reddit types. I'm, I'm screaming from the top of my lungs. Where are the Christians in tech? Like where, where are the people that are like me? And I have no clue how I got connected with him. He is connected in community and faith and tech community now, which was great. I, I found his Reddit post, but something like that is the reason why it's like, okay, God has given me a gift to be able to be a connector to say, Hey, like you have this quality or the skill that you want to bring. This person's actually looking for that and boom and bring. And if you start to see a theme in the apps and stuff that I create, think about technology connecting. So if you are someone who loves to connect, who God allows you, the Holy Spirit allows you to see connections between things. Like it can genuinely be a gift to be used for for good. Uh, then all this eventually I start gets to faith tools. The apps, yeah, because that that is that is beginning of faith tools is the people. And I was like, as at church, Life Church is great at giving away resources for free. They live with such a generous heart, and I'm like, okay, they're giving out resources. What if there's like a website? called faith.tools that could like be the uh, like the epicenter of kind of like an app store for Christians. Why don't we have anything like that? And if you think of the app store, the Google Play store, they don't feature Christian apps. They don't write stories and say app of the day. They're not going to do that. And sometimes people, Christians will create great apps and they'll go up a day and they'll kind of disappear off the charts and be hard to find. And if you search for Christian apps on the app store, there's a lot of and like with a good heart, I say there is a lot of apps that may be nefarious that are Christian, like Christian branded, even though like, yeah, it's just loaded with ads and 
their ads can be great, but they're it, it, just go Google search it. You'll you understand. And then if you go search on blog posts, you'll see top ten apps that are Christians is like they're usually the same things. They're usually the same things, and like just repeated. Or there's an as a 2015 blog that just had really good SEO keywords that keeps popping up, and it's like no, the apps have changed. They're different, and I have the blessing to be able to have met some really great creators um, and learning about these communities and then having you version and knowing that experience and how open handed it was there, there was a, so there's a bit of repentance that actually comes when building faith tools and I'm okay to, to talk a little, uh, to be a little longer if that allows um, yeah, for yeah. time. But I used to work on some Bible.com stuff and then look at Bible gateway and say, I want to be better than them. Like they rank high on Google, but we want to rank number one. And it's like, there is a fun spirit of competition that is like, that can be fun. But in that, I was actually being divisive. And even if it's playful, it's like, man, there's so much more resources. And like, like there's so much more space for us together. Um, If you think of Bible Gateway, they're one of the best Bible search engines that exists today. And I'm thankful for them. When I need to find a verse, who do I go to? So, like, there's room for a lot of us. And so part of my repentance is I want to bring these together. And I want to do it in a way that we don't pin against each other. There's not ratings that says this is better than this. It says, like, um, no, you're my brother. You're my sister. I love you. And if there's any way that I can help them collaborate, um, bring them together. So the deeper part is the faith and tech community. The outward part of it is their creations. And, and there just wasn't a great place to organize it at the time. I love telling their stories. You'll see that on the Faith Tools newsletter, just getting to know about them. But we found I found some cool ways to organize and find the apps. And people are submitting some great apps. There's, there's criteria on the Faith Tools website. You want to go to the bottom of it in the footer and just look about selection criteria. That is kind of how things are rated so that um, they're safe and quality and biblical to be able to help. And there are apps that aren't explicitly made for Christians, but Christians use them and it helps them a lot. Like uh, GroupMe is one that my life group uh, has. I love getting to work on it. Faith Tools has exploded in popularity and I'm surprised that it's ranking well on Google. You search uh, Christian budget apps and it's number two right now. And I see God's hand of blessing in it. Um, right now he's telling me in quiet times to yield and he'll show me kind of the next things. Um, it's a joy being able to build it. Uh, one feature that's coming soon is uh, ability to share your, your story. As in God used this app in this way. It's not a rating. It's not a review. It's, um, people love to hear stories. So sharing your faith story of how this app, how God used this app in your faith in your faith journey, um, that will be surfacing soon on Faith Tools. There's a little preview of it available now. So if you click an app, you scroll down. Um, so it's, it's a joy to be able to be part of this and to be able to be building it. I don't know exactly what's in it for the future, but um, I'm being diligent, prayerful, getting getting wisdom because it's actually a thing like this fake tools is becoming a thing. And so I want to steward it well. And it could even maybe be a job one day. It's just how would that, you like, do you go the ads route? Do you go the, <laughs> you know, do you get like Tim Challies has a blog every week. He has a, has a sp- sponsored blog post by whoever sponsors his blog and then yeah that gets top of the site you know for for that week so to speak that's cool you could do something like that and it's only with trusted partners um, absolutely so that they're getting a little bit more exposure but they're also someone that you trust so you can like have some you know criteria for if they're well i guess if it's on the site itself you have some yeah and i actually just added for you there go ahead there's about 55 categories for apps and tools and services. And I just added the ability for you or somebody to sponsor a category. Maybe you build an app in that space and you're saying like, 
I care about this so much that I want to support it because it's, it's free to give, but it's not free to build or work on or maintain. And you're saying it's kind of a cool unifying piece of I sponsor and say, I care about, and I, and I want to advocate for these, these apps, these people that make these apps. We're not pinned up against each other. We're not competition. We're stronger together. So that's kind of the, the hope, the heart, um, yeah, added that today. Yeah. So if anyone wants to go and like click on it and just, if you're interested, if people are interested, I want to have a conversation. I want to figure out what that looks like. Yeah. You're, you're very much in the editor process, even up before we hit record uh, for this, you know, you're, you're talking to people learning how they're using the app. You know, it's, it's all the fun new company type of, oh, yeah. you were on the app and this is what you saw, you know, and, and even right now, as you're listening to this conversation, assuming you're not driving or something, you can just go to faith.tools <laughs> or you can search it on, it's not on the app store though. Like, I think that's yeah. the, not yet. Is there a plan? For if, if people want that, I could. And if Apple allows, yeah. Cause building the app for our technology, now I know how to publish an app, <laughs> which is great. If people want that and think it's, it's beneficial and then maybe you can, as if you, oh, there's some cooler stuff deeper for developers coming where you can actually link between apps. And I'm creating a list of, they're calling them universal resource indicators or locate, I think indicators. And it's how, it's like a URL, but it looks different. And each app can have their own and it's unique. And that would allow you to open the app. So what if apps could talk to each other? What if you could bring your version to other places? Like that's the hope. More things would be connected like that in the future. That's a, that's a dream. That's a vision. And I really believe it will happen. Yeah. And there's things like that. That is like the underlying frameworks that allow it to happen. Yeah, there is. I've heard this before from another Christian developer of just a desire for more integration and how that, how powerful that can be. And it seems to be, you know, if we're thinking about design principles, uh, a Christian design principle that might be more unique to Christians is this desire for unity, collaboration, mm -hmm. and competition, like you know, how you described the Bible gateway of like, yeah, like they can do their thing that might be different than Bible.com, might be different than, you know, specific websites. Um, yeah, really, really interesting. Um, I am curious, like, the other thing that you'll have to navigate is the criteria. You know, I'm like looking through it. I yeah. remember looking through it when I first saw your site, like a month or so ago. And it's like, like how do you draw the line on whether or not it's Christian enough? Because there's lots of apps that are helpful for Christians. Like I use Rome Research or I use Gmail, you know, like nice. obviously you don't need to use yeah. a Christian email provider. Um, but there might be some design principles that are different from one company to another, depending on whether it, it has Christian morality guiding it explicitly. So yes, uh, how are you going to figure that out going forward? Like, would you create or consider creating some sort of like advisory committee or something of that sort? Like you could just partner with life church in some way, because there's a lot of trust with life church. Yeah, um, absolutely that already exists both relationally in terms of you with life church, but also just more generally that people trust you version to not be too spammy or yeah, uh, to, to have to, they direct you back to scripture rather than, you know, to, to fleeting novelty stuff. Yes. There I'm, there is something I'm working on. I'm kind of figuring out how much I should share of it where it's called the healthy tech index. Healthy tech index is something that will become a thing. I'm one part of it. There are other parts and there are like, I can say this techlist.com is part of it and led by some believers who are great and using, I, I want to show you, but it would actually show how to access it. And I can't allow that yet. Um, that's right, that's right. It, it's called the healthy tech index. And what you can do is say, you can search for an app. You can search for any app. You can click on the app and it will find a bunch of information about it. It will find out like, uh, what are some privacy? I'll, Andrew, I'll let you test it out after this. What are some uh, policies that it has? Um, what does the community say about it? Have some trusted sources said that it's like not, um, 
like not helpful for Christians or it's just really bad because it has a backdoor to be able to look at things you shouldn't be able to look into. We look at, does it have a in-app browser where you could like click a link and then go anywhere and find anything. So there's lots of things that are coming together. And then there's a score at the end. And it's like one out of 10. And that's the healthy tech index. And then we'd be able to say like TikTok got like a 3.2. So it, it can help you see like, and you can list out. So I'm listing out some principles of like, here are biblical principles here. Here is what it looks like to live as a Christian. Here's fruits of the spirit, things like that. And like, would this app, given all the information you know about it, allow me to live a life like that? Mm-hmm. Or can it accidentally or intentionally make me sin and go the wrong direction or the other direction? So this healthy tech index, this idea will be available. I can say it's partly in partnership with Techlist and they're great. So if you look at techlist.com, they create a very simplified phone to be able to live mindfully and not super tech distracted. Like yeah. Tech like te- yeah. Tech and then less.com. Okay. Cool. I like did tech lists, I think. And then I got a whole other thing. So, yeah. Cause I think it's just tech list without the plural. Anyways, I, I think that's a, I think it's a oh. good idea. I th- I'll show you the link. I think you're saying list. It's tech and then L E S S. So tech less. Oh, that makes yes, yes. sense. Um, okay. Yes. Articulation tech has less. got me a few times in life. No, no. I'm sure our <laughs> listeners were hopefully having the same problem as me so that I don't feel like an idiot. But um, but no, 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 I think you should do that. I think you should continue down your collaboration approach. Like I could imagine like a few people that I think it would be good for you to connect with. One is John Dyer. Cause he's thought a lot about. Yes. Like, like he's created multiple apps himself. He's kind of like you in some ways. Um, he's studied theology as well, which helps. Did he interview you when you were at Uversion? Cause he wrote a whole no. book about in part what Uversion did. Wow. No, I think, is um, he the y'all version guy? Yeah. He's the y'all version guy. Wow. That's, that's one way to know him. So yeah. I imagine I'll get connected with him. him. Yeah, if he has time, we'll see. Um, but another thing that you could use is the evangelical statement on AI use. Oh, whatever. yes. Can you send written, that to me? Yeah, I will. It was written okay. like five or four years ago now, but it still is very helpful to differentiate between like the human person versus any artificial people, quote unquote, you know, like some of that kind of stuff. Um, but some of the some of the ethical stuff is still in motion, like it's still figuring it yeah. out. And I think one of the disconnects sometimes is like the moral ethicists. They can kind of be they can talk about things like transhumanism, and are, which is an important thing to talk about. But on the ground, what you're talking about in terms of an actual understanding of apps and how like all those little details that you were describing of in browser stuff, like those details yeah. really matter. And yep. parents need that. Like in a week, I'm going to be meeting with a bunch of parents and I have no doubt they're going to ask me for what you just described with tech less. Um, yeah. And like dumb, dumb phones. There's, there's not very good, many good dumb phones in Canada. In fact, we just don't have a market for it. So there's no dumb phones in Canada. Mm. You like there's in the U S there's a enough of a market for building phones that lack features. Um, yeah. So Anyways, it's just different challenges, but that's fine. Like any consumer device. If I was launching a consumer company, I'd go, I'd move to the States. Like you just have to do it. <laughs> There's, you need the market to, to yeah. niche product and grow, but it is niche. Um, but no, I think it's, I think it's a cool journey you're on and there's, uh, there's a lot of potential, I think for it, I think. I have some skepticism about like, is this really going to solve a problem for people? But I can imagine as a pastor, I, or I can imagine a pastor saying, okay, I want to help guide people in learning the Bible. Are there good apps for that? And then they yeah. use, use you guys, you use faith thought tools in order to just get a sense of what exists out there. And then they go from there. Right. Um, yeah. So it's almost a trusted source. Like it's so tough because you just don't know 
you got to like, are you going to build a rating system and all that kind of stuff and allow users to rate? Or are you going to keep it more non? Because there are those websites like Captera and there's other kinds. Like when I worked at my HR tech company, we were huge on those ranking websites, like telling our customers to rank us because those were so important. And, but I don't know if that's a good fit for you guys because that's less collaborative, more competition, but it could offer yeah. benefit to the user in the same way that a five stars on Amazon helps you convince you. To yeah, absolutely. There is, there will be some things in the future. So you hit it on the, like the nail on the head and the nail of like, we, we can't do things exactly how they've been done because it may be divisive. So if I put a star rating system against something else and think of the five star rating system, you get one that's less than five, then you're in the fours. And if you get to, if you ever get to three, it's like this app's bad. And it's like, is that true? Because they update things over time and yet those previous ones still count. Um, What if it was like, Hey, here's some user or this many users use this app or this many users recommend this app and it has nothing, or it's like there, maybe there's a thumbs up, thumbs down. I'm not going to say how many people thumbs down besides you would have to do the math yourself of this many people thumbs out of this many total. You know, that's like one idea. I really need wisdom for how to do that. You're not the first person who's mentioned like Captera G2 kind of thing. Actually this week, I think this week you're probably the third person that has said that to me, which is really intriguing. Um, makes me want to process and pray more about how important something like that could be. Mm-hmm. No, that's good. And good to process and pray instead of just launching features for the sake of launching features. Because, yeah, yeah, like I think that's like going back to reckless, responsible, redemptive, like fundamentally you you have been given a conscience by God. So you need to, you know, act according to that conscience, which should be as best as you can aligning your conscience with scripture. And you can do that through prayer and reading um, and through learning and being discipled in all, all sorts of ways, really. But yeah, yeah, I mean, we could probably keep talking, but we should probably wrap up because we both have <laughs> other things to do and you've got a product to build and a job to go back to. So yeah. Um, so people should go to faith.tools. They can also just follow you. you got a website with links to a couple newsletters because you do a newsletter for faith.tools and you do a newsletter, yeah. just a personal one because you get up to writing every once in a while yourself. Um, yeah. Or should people go, where would you send them um, in order to keep in touch with your progress? Yeah, if you want to learn about me, um, go to cameronpack.com. It's C-A-M-E-R-O-N-P-A-K.com. And then... If you, with faith tools, find one app, find one app, find one area where you want to grow in your faith. You're like, this has really been on my mind. It's really been on my heart, but you kind of just been like pushing it to the side, find one area and just try an app and see if that can help. And if that app has some communal features, try it with a friend. That's, that's my recommendation for you. Cool. Awesome. Well, thanks, Kim. I really appreciate this conversation. I hope uh, it's been thanks, helpful Sam. to our listeners who are, you know, trying to figure out in their own lives, maybe it's a job decision, maybe it's an ethical thing at work, maybe it's they're just struggling in prayer and they're curious about using something to support their prayer. Um, you know, I use a I use a Bible app every day. It gives me a text of scripture. I got a guess where it is in the Bible. Like there's Bible games that exist <laughs> that help you get into scripture and in some innovative ways. And so, yeah, there's lots of different apps out there that you don't need to settle for what's on the app store and recommended to you on the app store. That's a cool differentiation Absolutely. in my mind of you know, you sign into the app store. I, I don't get notifications from the app store. Who would allow Apple to notify you about apps? Anyways, uh, <laughs> I, I remove all those notifications, but but they will try to like be like, oh, this is popular. This game is popular, all this yep, kind of stuff. Yep. But there's stuff that is built by Christians for Christians. And um, yeah, we, we should not be blind to that world and we should support one another in it. Um, because Absolutely. At the end of the day, as we've said on this podcast many times, you know, technology does shape you. It forms you. And yeah, fundamentally, the spirit's more important than the app. But 
we should be selective with our apps and we should use the ones that um, do help us glorify God, just as people in scripture use the technology that help them glorify God. Um, so that's a faith thought tools. Thank you for listening. Thank you to our Patreon supporters. Um, the whole Christian world lacks money, but we do have some of you out there who support us and uh, maybe there will be some investor listening to this podcast who's going <laughs> to Probably not, man. I do no guarantees, but that would be cool if uh, there was a story that's like, man, I just, uh, I just yeah. thought this was good and then I heard it. I heard the podcast. <laughs> well, Jesus but uh, man, I would tell you about God, that. Oh, yeah. To goes to God. Anyways, take care, listeners. Take care, Cam. Uh, bye bye for now.